Hello my friends, welcome back to Keto in the Chaos. My name is Tammy and on this channel I like to share all my tips and tricks on how I lost over 200 pounds without bariatric surgery and how you can be successful on your own weight loss journey. So if that's what you're looking for, don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the bell for more videos like this one to inspire you to get started. Well, hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Um, in this video, I'm going to be giving you a three week update on my tummy tuck surgery. So if you're new here and you're just finding me with this video, um, on July 15th, 2021, which was three weeks ago, um, I had a full 360 degree tummy, tummy tuck with a fleur de lis, which is a vertical incision be from the breastbone to the pubic bone in order to reduce loose skin. I also had muscle repair to repair diastasis recti, and I also had a medial thigh lift. <laughs> so it was a lot of, it was a lot of surgery, and um, it has been an interesting three weeks. So if you have been following along, you have seen some of the harder, harder things that I have gone through um, just this recently this week. I didn't do a lot of vlogging this week. Um, all of the vlogging that I did this week was about draining my seromas, which was in the last video. So if you missed that, you should go check that out. Um, but yeah, this week has been a little bit challenging due to that. And I think the biggest hurdle that I've had this week is just feeling frustrated with the very little that I am capable of accomplishing. So um, I will say that definitely in the pain department, things have gradually improved this week. Um, I still do suffer from a lot of stiffness at night. Um, about a week ago, I did move from the lift chair over into my bed. Um, I am basically sleeping with my regular down pillow underneath my head. I'm trying to be on my side and I've got my, like, I have a purple pillow. I don't know if you know Purple Company, but my kids gave me a purple pillow. And I will say the purple pillow is really good for support. So it has a nice squishy, but then nice support. And so I use it kind of like between my legs as I'm on my side or under my legs if I'm laying on my back. And what's really ironic is that I'm a side sleeper and I really thought that I would get back to sleeping on my side a lot, but I find that I roll now to my back. My body is preferring that. The problem is, is that when I'm on my back, my body always wants to stretch out my stomach muscles. It thinks that they're all tight because I haven't stretched them. And in my sleep, it will attempt to stretch them out and that's painful. <laughs> so often I will dream that somebody's like ripping me in half or like something's happening to me and I'm like trying to convince some person to like stop hurting me and I'm like come up with all these brilliant plans to get them to stop. And when I finally wake up, I realize it's actually me doing it to myself. I'll roll myself to the side because it happens less often in the, on my side. But when I'm on my side, I have noticed I'm still having a lot of pain on my hips where the drains were inserted originally. So those um, holes, the left side is better than the right side because it came out sooner, but on both sides, they still ache and hurt. Almost like the drains are still in there. I have to remind myself the drain's not there. You're not pinching off anything because it used to be I was worried that I would like pinch off the drain and it wouldn't work. And that's why I was afraid to sleep on my side. And now I have to like have this whole conversation with myself. Remember, the drain's not there anymore. They took it out. So you're fine. Just lay on your side. But it's still uncomfortable. Also, the sides of the faha, even though I got a smaller size, I don't know if, if it's just too long in the torso or if it's just still too big. It like rolls like this because it's a zipper down the side and it's like the zipper goes like this and I have to like pull it up really like tight to my bra line so that it will be smooth as possible but I still feel like it's jabbing in me so sleeping on my side is still not super comfortable I do attempt it because it is my preferred way of sleeping before surgery but I find that literally flat on my back with my legs on a pillow tends to be where my body likes to go. And I'm still really stiff and in pain at night. I still wake up at least once a night needing to have a pain pill. Um, 
I'm better off when I'm kind of like moving around. So it's like being in one spot, like getting stiff. That's the problem. So I try and like move myself, like I said, from side to side or whatever in the night um, to try and alleviate that. But the nighttime is, is pretty much the worst pain that I'm struggling with at the moment. Um, the biggest challenge though at this point, I think is the lack of being able to do anything. So I do feel better when I'm up and moving around and my joints aren't getting like stiff and everything. But the problem is, is I really cannot stand up or do anything for more than about a half an hour in the morning. And if I do, if I, if you know, like, and that, that, that exhausts me. Like I end up basically in my bed for the rest of the day. Pretty much every day <laughs> and so like every morning i'm like okay what am i going to get done today normally i would be like doing some dishes doing a little light cleaning in the kitchen doing some cooking for myself making sure i have food um those are the things i focus on um in the mornings usually okay so here's a little funny story <laughs> yesterday was actually my three weeks post-op day i woke up feeling pretty dang amazing yesterday and I was like dang I don't feel stiff I don't feel pain I slept really well it's the the hurting at night isn't so bad and like and I have this plan like I am going to get up and I'm going to clean my bathroom because it has not been clean since before surgery which means it hasn't been cleaned in three weeks now don't get me wrong I, it doesn't get that dirty it's just you know me and Dave using the bathroom in my room but nobody cleans that bathroom by me Nobody. Dave does not have time. I've hardly seen Dave since he went back to work. He's back to his t midnight to 5 a.m. sleeping and being gone all day schedule. That's just how Dave does. He has his day job and then he works on vehicles at our house all night long because people won't leave him alone and stop asking him. During my re early recovery, he turned a lot of those jobs down and now he's having to take them on. So I don't see him much and he's not going to clean the house. My kids, they have jobs elsewhere. They're not going to clean my bathroom. So don't judge me, but my bathroom hasn't been cleaned in three weeks because who am I going to ask to clean my bathroom? I'm not going to ask anybody to clean my bathroom. I'm just not. So yesterday I was like, okay, three weeks. I got to clean the bathroom. It's going to get vile. I got to clean it. And of course, so, so this was my plan. I'm going to get up, run my kid to, um, his high school registration and he's a sophomore and I totally dumped him off by himself to do it by himself. He survived. I usually wouldn't do that. That's just, let's just put it that way. I would normally totally embarrass that kid and make him stand in line with me the whole time, but he did it by himself and he got it, he got it taken care of. So I dropped my kid off at 9am, came home, cleaned the bathroom, and then I made a lovely video for you guys. So before I go into the rest of it, I'm going to show you the clip. It's long and this video is probably going to be long just because all my videos are long lately, but trust me, you're going to want to see it. This is an in-depth view of my post-surgery body, three weeks post-op, full on. I even show my thighs. Don't miss it. So you guys um, go watch that and then come back here and we're going to chat about what happened next. Alrighty guys, welcome to my three week tummy tuck, how it looks update. Um, I know I've showed how it looks a lot, but today is the official, it has been three weeks from surgery. One thing I haven't talked about is my bra situation. So um, when I knew that I was gonna be having the fleur de lis surgery, which is basically the line that goes from breastbone all the way down to pubic bone, I knew that I was gonna need some like super comfy bras. I tried several different kinds. This is still my favorite. It's actually the one I was wearing before um, surgery. It's just my regular daytime bra. It's the True Kind wire-free support bra. I've been wearing these for a while now and it does not bother my um, fleur de lis incision at all. So as you can see, my fleur de lis incision goes clear up here. Um, it does have like a little bit of a knot or bump here up at the top, um, that's pretty normal. That's where they tie off the stitch. Um, it doesn't bother me. It's not super huge. You can see it's just a little, let's see if I can show it. I can hardly even show it today. Um, and this just goes right on top of that and it's really super comfortable. So I think that it works really great for this. Okay, so this is my Fleur de Lis line. 
lot of people don't know why um, you would have one of these vertical incisions is I had a lot of loose skin up here. And the only way to reduce that, like if they were to pull it down just for a regular tummy tuck, I'd still have a lot of loose laxity up in this area up here. So this incision basically, um, they, they cut me like this originally and then brought the pieces together. And that is what creates this vertical um, incision. So this is what the vertical incision looks like at three weeks. This is me standing with no pulling in at all. This is me sucking in as hard as I can. So yeah, that's what the incision looks like. Um, it looks normal to me. It looks fine. I don't know. It doesn't bother me. This is my little belly button. My belly button is my original belly button. This was done by when he made the incision. So he, he did this, right? And then he also cut down here and he removed this, this section above my belly button. So my belly button wasn't there when he did it. It was down and the lower section. And when he did it, he made sure to cut around my belly button. So I actually have a picture of the inside of me, my muscle repair, and you can actually, if you zoom way in, you can see my little belly button right in the middle of it, the whole thing sewn up inside. And then after he did all of this and that, he opened up a little hole Pulled the belly button through and I don't know how he sewed it but he sewed it from the inside because you can see there's no stitching like around the belly button at all all the black scabs were just blood that had kind of clicked there aren't no stitches there um, at least not on the outside I don't know how he did that but it's my teeny tiny little real me belly button he says if these scabs have not come off by the time I see him next Tuesday he will probably have removed them so that's what belly button is looking like right now um, this morning, I'm a lot more bloaty through here um, than usual. Um, that just kind of goes day by day. Like, I feel weird that you can't see my face. Let's see. Let's just tip it up for a second. Um, the bloatiness, like, kind of, I mean, and the, the puffiness kind of, like, changes day by day. Some days, like, if you saw my 19-day update, it was really, really, like, and today it's just kind of a little bit not I don't know why it just kind of does that um I do have this you can see it's me um I do have this hangover here that kind of comes from my back and still hangs over on the sides as you can see um see, technically these are my hip bones in here so it does kind of look like my hip bones are just kind of popping out but that is still some loose skin. Almost looks like dog ears, which is funny because I don't have a surge, an incision up here, so it can't be. It could still be swelling um, somewhat, of course, because obviously I'm kind of swollen today. But as you can see, I have still have a lot of loose skin in the back. But you can see I still have this. In order to remove this, I have to do the 360 up here, bra line lift, and have everything pull up. In the future, if I find a way to finish paying off this surgery that I just did and can afford to do it again, obviously I will have my brachioplasty done, have my arms done, um, have a breast lift, not augmentation or reduction. Well, but it'll be a reduction because a lot of the loose skin will be removed, but um, a lift and along those lines, instead of just doing a J, which would be like a, it would go here into the bra, into the breast lift. Um, instead of doing just that, I would end up going 360 around the back. So I would have a bra line cut up here to lift up all of that. It's the only way to remove it. So I kind of, kind of knew that that would be part of the deal. Um, three weeks in, I was hoping it would be a little better. I was hoping that maybe the sides wouldn't like hang down so much, but to be honest, like considering what I looked like before, in fact, I'm going to take the moment to do that before a picture right here and maybe even a before a picture from the side. Yeah, it's way better than that. And that's what I just keep telling myself. I'm like, you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't have to be perfect. 
the surgery doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to make me feel better. And it does. And I do. So, I mean, like, I couldn't even wear these panties before this surgery. So there's that. These are Warner's anti-muffin top or whatever muffin top panties. Size six, guys. Could not wear them before. I had bought them thinking they would fit me based on measurements and they hurt really bad, especially on my thighs. So as far as how everything else is going, um, let's just see if we can see this incision here. So this is where the two incisions meet. This was the lower, um, basically they cut this huge piece out here. That was my panelectomy, the removal of the big flap was down here. And then of course, this is the removal of that. And this is where they connect. And where they connect, I still have some scabbing. That will come off on its own. Um, the scar itself is really not looking bad, especially where the scabs have come off. These are my drain holes. So they're still looking not so awesome today, especially on the side. This was the the, the last ones to be removed were from over on this side. So they're a little bit grosser than the other side. Um, you can see though, I do not have a lot of really bad puffiness right here at the line. Like I see a lot of people online. So I don't know like why, but I'm happy about that. Um, you can see these ones look a little better. They were out sooner. Um, to take care of these, I put Aquaphor or Neosporin on them. Like once a day, I spray them with the wound spray just to be safe every day, a couple of times. Um, wash, of course, in the shower. I do every other day in the shower just because it's such a pain, which is, you know, why I'm doing this today because I am doing a shower today. Okay, this. This is actually um, water. This and so is this here. So this is the seroma. And this is another part of the seroma. You can see it's not my panties doing it. It is literally my leg. Um, this is where the fluid that's no longer coming out of the drain has started pooling in my body. This is where the doctor has been draining with a needle. And this is just kind of an, a, a descendancy of that issue that I'm having. So this is swelling. We'll go down. So I know that my shape will improve a lot over time. So I'm not super worried about it. This right here is also a seroma and it's looking a lot better today actually. But you can see this is my thigh um, incision here. Let's see if I can maybe I'll drag my actually use my uh, chair. Oh look, you can see when I'm bending over like how it looks. Hey, hey, that's not bad. I haven't tried that yet. I haven't tried looking at that yet. Okay, let's put that here. Let's put that before again up there, the sideways before. Yeah, right? I mean, come on. Who doesn't want that? Okay, let's see if I can use my chair. That'll make it too weird. Okay, there we go. So this is my thigh incision on this side. And this is, of course, from my Faha pushing or pushes right here. This is an old scar that I already had. Um, the bruising is from where I bled. This is the one I bled from a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, like, considering what it looked like when it started. Um, this right here, ironically, is the end of my scar. That's kind of like, dude, couldn't you have took my old scar out? But apparently not. I have this from when I was 10 years old. I got uh, cut on a piece of rebar. <laughs> but anyway, um, I refuse to get stitches, guys. Refuse. That's why I have that scar. So it's totally my fault. So whatever. It doesn't matter. I had it my whole life. Okay. So anyway, this is the entire, this is the longer side, actually, of my thigh lift. But you can see... How nicely it pulled me up and this right here is still a huge amount of swelling this is where he's been draining the seroma so let's just see if I can do the other side so you guys can see the comparison of this one see it's a lot shorter and you can see the J line more on this side so this is actually where this is my panty line but this is actually the scar this one is a little closer to my panty line on this side but you can see it goes here and it only goes to there on this leg. Um, this was my smaller leg. This is my bigger leg. He took more from this side than he did from this side. That's just how it is. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I'm not super worried about that. I mean, it took out all of that 
basically that wrinkly skin that I had right here. Um, if you guys remember from my loose skin video, um, I had a whole bunch right there. So my legs look really smooth with the full 360. It lifted all of the back of here. Like if that's what he did is he lifted everything up. Um, and I thought I'd have a really flat booty and it's not super bad. You know, like it has still some roundness to it. So that's a relief because I really, really thought at first that it was going to be like super flat and it isn't. Um, but that's my scar. It's clear up here above my panting line. You can see that. This is me standing straight. So you can see all this loose skin still there. And here's from this side. So you can see on this side, the hip scar is a little higher than on this side. And that's been the only thing that's kind of bugged me, I think, because it's not like super um, uniform, symmetrical, because like this one goes here and this one is here. So it's a little off that way. Also, I was kind of not expecting this to kind of go up in the front, but I think it is what it is. I don't wear bikinis. These panties fit me fine. You can see they cover up the scar on both sides. They don't cover it in the back. All right, so there you have it. That's what it's looking like three weeks post-op. Um, I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be doing like the whole makeup thing and like recording you a video. So you probably already saw the beginning of that. And I'm just gonna head back to that. This was long, sorry about that. But this was the big update. I wanted you guys to see what it looked like. I'll do it again probably next week for the one month. And then after that, I don't know, I don't, maybe I'll do them like once a month or something like that. Just kind of let you guys know like where things are standing with the swelling, what the scars looking like, what my belly button's looking like, what the thighs are looking like, you know, all that stuff. So anyway, all right, let's get back to me. All right, so as you can see, I did that little segment. And then right after that, I hopped in the shower. Um, my friends who has been tutoring, I have two of my kids who are being tutored. Um, she's been coming all summer. She was here knowing that I was in the shower and she hasn't seen me since my surgery because she didn't want to bother me. And she's just been taking care of the kids learning, my two youngest. And she and I have been not feeling like coming down and chatting, but I knew that she was needing to chat because I saw some posts on Facebook that made me made me concerned about her and I needed to chat. So I quickly showered, did my hair. I wasn't expecting to her to come over at that time. My plan was that, she, that I would shower, make this video that I'm making for you now, and then chat with her in the afternoon. And she ended up coming earlier in the day. And so I showered quickly, did my hair, and went downstairs, made food, and then had to go pick up my son from registration because he just finished it up, came back. She was just finishing up the tutoring session with my two littles, and I sat in a chair, totally felt fine. Um, I don't know how long it took me to clean the bathroom, about an hour, which that's, you know, I mean, that's pushing it. And then I also picked up the kitchen because she was over and I was making food. So the kitchen was not that dirty because a lovely friend came and cleaned it for me. And so the kitchen just needed to be a little bit of pickup, a little bit of wash the counters. Did, the, did that very, very light cleaning. Went and picked up my son, came back, sat in a chair, talked to her for two hours. So I think two hours, yeah, maybe maybe three. <laughs> sat in a chair and talked to her for a really long time. I missed my pain pill because I was chatting and didn't realize, and of course I was sitting and so I didn't realize anything was happening until she said she had to go and I was like, bye, see ya. And I'm like, okay, I better go upstairs and make my video and I stood up. I was wondering this morning, like how would a person know if they overdid it? Because like, I feel fine. Like I'm picking stuff up off the floor and I'm I scrubbed the tub, I scrubbed the toilet, I washed off all the counters, I cleaned the shower. Yes, and I felt fine the whole time, but I stood up and I was all of a sudden in excruciating pain. My whole right hip, especially in the back, like where I was like bending over to pick up things, literally, it literally felt like somebody just stabbed a knife in my back and I was like, oh my gosh, this is bad. Like I hadn't heard this bad since 
actually, I don't even know if it ever hurt that bad because I was on such big heavy duty pain pills the first few days. It probably felt like that the first few days, but I didn't feel it. And I was on no pain pills because I hadn't even taken a Tylenol in all day. Oh, oh guys, I'll tell you what. I guess if you're overdo it, you won't know until it's too late. And this is my warning to you. Don't let yourself get ahead of yourself and think, hey, I'm feeling amazing. I can do stuff. No, you can't do stuff. Stop, stop thinking you can do stuff. I'm telling this to me. Stop thinking you can do stuff. You can't do stuff. Mm -mm, no. Should have had your friend clean your bathroom. Yep. I should have. <laughs> should have made somebody clean it. Not you. I am paying the price. I was suffering so bad for the whole rest of the night. I could not get comfortable. I was panicking, thinking I've split a stitch. I was a mess emotionally, physically. I was in pain and I was like, no, this is three weeks out and I've screwed something up. I've broken me. Panic zone. <sighs> okay, so. <laughs> I ended up taking a narcotic yesterday, an oxycodone, and I don't really love how it makes me feel. It makes me feel really warm all over, like I'm too hot, and then I can't put the blanket on, and then it kind of gives me a headache, like right between the eyes, almost like I'm low on electrolytes, and then I just kind of feel like it's making me go to sleep, even though I don't want to go to sleep, but it did take away the pain, and it was at night. And so I finally was able to let myself fall asleep, but man, I slept pretty dang hard. I didn't even wake up until five, which is pretty rare. I usually wake up at least twice before that because that's my normal. I always wake up a lot of times in the night. That's just what I've done forever since I was little. And so, yeah, I woke up and at 5 a.m. and I was in pretty good pain still, but I was able to take ibuprofen and then go back to sleep. I slept till about eight. Woke up at eight, I didn't take any more pain meds. I con contemplated taking a Tylenol, but I didn't. And then just, it's now noon, 12.30, and I went ahead and took some more ibuprofen just before I did, well, just after I did finish my makeup. So I was able to get my makeup done this morning. I'm still hurting. It's still, it, it's still sore right there, um, but the funny thing is, because I was so worried about that and what it was doing, because I could feel it poking me and I can feel it in the front and the back on that side. Because like, I guess that's the side I tweak when I lean over and bend over. And this morning I've needed to bend over and get things a couple of times. And I was like, mm. when I first started this journey, I actually, I bought a grabber to pick things up. I rarely used it. I actually was so strong from doing so many squats before that I could literally squat and pick things up off the floor and it was no big deal. So that's what I had to resort to today again, doing squats, but even the squats were hurting. And so I was like, I had to do this thing where I did like a, a where I did like an arabesque. So like if you guys are dancers or if you know anybody that's dancers, basically where you like lift your leg up. So like I found that if I lifted my leg up behind me, like I was dancing and then tipped myself like this, my leg up, my arm down, I could pick stuff off the floor without tweaking my hip and that's what I've been doing this morning a couple of things just in my room I've just been like it's oh there was some laundry on the floor that I was like the kids like pulled all of my linens out the linen closet and then like took a shower and got all water all over it. I'm like what is this on the floor and I'm like I can't help it like I had to pick it up nobody else is gonna do it so I did this whole ballet thing. <laughs> it was hilarious. Wish I would have got a video of that because that's funny. But it worked. It kept me from tweaking my leg. And um, so I was able to get some chores done even this morning. But I made sure not to do too, nothing major. Nothing major. Okay. So here I am. 1230. My daughter's coming home from girls camp very soon. I'm contemplating what I'm going to do because apparently she's possibly exposed to COVID and I'm like, I cannot get COVID right now. I mean, I am vaccinated, but I know a lot of people who've still gotten it, even though they were vaccinated and frankly, don't want to be coughing at all. Are you kidding? No. And you know what? I go outside today. I, well, actually, when I first go downstairs today, I smell smoke and I think my house is on fire. So I'm like booking it down the stairs, which is probably not a good idea. Trying to find the fire. I go outside. There is smoke everywhere. It is so thick. You cannot even breathe outside and there's no fires here. These, this smoke is blown in from states away. 
and it is so thick i cannot even see our mountains i cannot the sun is orange i cannot see the the trees in my own yard without a haze i am having trouble breathing in the house i'm starting to cough we shut all the windows turned off all the acs even though it's hot we don't want any air coming in the house because it is that bad outside and i'm just like of all things i do not need to be dealing with smoke while I am trying to recover from this surgery. Now, I know there's worse things in the world, so I shall survive, but this is this is what's happening to me today. So you guys get to find out about it, because why not? Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, 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 back. Okay, so back to, I was so concerned about it ripping. Like I wanted to see if it was like bleeding underneath, but did I have a new bruise, you know? It's in the same exact spot that I had the bruise before, right in my, um, on, I don't know if I ever showed that bruise, probably have. It's gone now, I've been using Arnica gel on it for since my surgery is gone, the bruise is gone. So I would know like if it was a new bruise. So I decided this morning, even though I wasn't gonna shower, that I stripped down the Faja and checked everything out just to see if there's any damage. And hello, Kate. So do you guys just watch that segment where I went on this big thing about how I had all, all this loose skin on the back and the sides that was going to be taken out when I had the 360 bra lift and I was like showing like from the front, I looked like I was going like this, right? And I was thinking, gosh, I swear it didn't look that bad a couple of days ago. Like what is going on here? And you know what? It was gone. I am flat. I am, okay, okay. I took a picture. Let's just put that picture right there for you right look at that okay so that right my friends right there is how weird the swelling is after this whole thing you don't know if it's loose skin fat or swelling they all three look the same I'm like panicking thinking okay maybe I am eating too much food maybe I need to pull it back a little bit I'm getting a little fat back there oh, that's a problem you know panicking yesterday like thinking oh my gosh I can't believe I looked this bad after because then day 19 and day 21 were so vastly different I thought oh my gosh I've screwed up everything no guys I cleaned the bathroom that's the only thing I did to myself I did that video right after I cleaned the bath the bathroom thinking well I haven't eaten anything and I'm and so probably I'm still like as thin as I'm gonna be for the day and then as I was making the video I realized gosh I'm looking really chubs it's gone it's all gone to today it's looking better today than it did yesterday and I even hurt myself and I have swelling right there but there's no bruising it looks fine from the outside so here's hoping I didn't completely screw it up but here I'm seeing like on Facebook groups people you know saying oh I overdid it and I split a stitch guys that's how it happens you think you're feeling good and then you do something dumb. Like me. Don't be like me. I think probably everybody will get to the point where they do overdo and have to pull back. That's just part of the process. And honestly, like my recovery has been textbook easy compared to what I've seen on Facebook groups like the things that could happen to you none of these things have happened and the swelling in the in the front that a lot of people have they have huge hangovers over their scars and everything like mine is so flat which is so good for the psyche and I'm grateful for that because dude like if I was just like puffing out all over the stomach I'd probably be having panic attacks right now and you guys would be telling me it's a carbohydrate it's making you fat It is not the carbohydrates making me fat, just so you know. I eat carbs a lot. Guys, if you're new to my channel, I know my name is Keto Chaos, Keto in the Chaos. That would be because I lost my weight using a ketogenic low calorie diet, high protein, low calorie, very low carb. You can go back and watch all of the how to's on how to do that. You can join my Facebook group and I'll teach you how to do it. But keto does not work for me long term. I have tried it multiple times. I cannot maintain. It's not satiating i don't keep my electrolytes in balance and this past year i added carbs back into my diet and became zen <laughs> so guys carbs are not new to me it's not the carbs trust me not the carbs it's called horrible surgery cut open filleted wide open i have a picture of me 
my entire torso, like from breasts to girl parts, open. <laughs> Why? I have a picture of it. I look good underneath, just so you know, really good. And in fact, I'm trying to figure out how I can share that with you guys. Can I make a video of it and just be like, graphic pictures do not watch or like should I put it in like a secret Dropbox link or something and like post it and you guys can go look at them like I don't know I don't know but just let's just suffice it to say if you were cut open flayed open you would swell too it's a fact and that is the point of showing it if I'm not stressing over my weight. In fact, so since we're talking about weight, back in the two week video, you guys saw that I got down to like 188, 189 on my weight. Pre-surgery, the day of, I was at 178. Um, he took eight and a half pounds off of me and I weighed 205 at my highest after the surgery within the week of the surgery. Nobody puts on 30 pounds in a week and it's body fat. Nobody. There's no way you can, like, I don't know how many calories you'd have to eat. It's 3,500 extra calories per every pound. Let's do the math on that. That'd be like, what, 90,000 calories? Extra. On top of the 15 to 20 per pound of body weight that you need to heal your body after surgery. No. <laughs> no. Anyway, my weights this week... Uh, well, let's just show them to you. I'm just going to put them in a row because we didn't do the vlog thing this year, this uh, week. So here you go. I know this video is long. I'm sorry. But here's all my weights for the week. Your book was on my best life. Yeah. Your book was on my best life. Yeah. Something you and me oh. Your book was on my best life. Yeah. Jumping, flexing, I know. I just want to know. Something you and me, oh. You both got some of the best life, yeah. All right, so as you can see, weight is stable. About 190. Not my favorite weight. Not the worst weight. At least there's not a two in front of my, my weight. Is it bothering me? No. I don't really care that much. Honestly, I'm like, I look in the mirror and I'm like, dang, who cares what I weigh? I look good, <laughs> right? Like really in the long-term scheme of things, does the scale number matter if what you see in the mirror makes you thrilled? No, it doesn't. And so I'm not even worrying right now if any of it is body fat or if any of it is whatever, I'm or carbs, the evil carbs, the carbs of death. Just so you know, guys, carbs are muscle sparing. They protect your muscles from breaking down. When you're in ketosis, your body is always breaking down protein that you eat and protein in your body, including skin. Yes, including skin, but also including muscle. Yep. For gluconeogenesis, it's always happening because your brain always needs glucose. It does not happen in an excess of dietary protein. It happens all the time in ketosis, which is why ketosis is not necessarily the best place to be when you are healing. My doctor agrees with me. He does not want me doing keto after my surgery. A lot of people have been asking me that. Um, maybe you guys should just start like bombarding me with questions so that I can do like a Q and A, but that, that is the biggest question I've got. Don't you think the carbs are making you fat? No. Don't you think the carbs are making you retain water? Who cares? retaining water because I just had surgery. That's what happens when you have an injury. Haven't you ever gotten a bruise? Haven't you ever had a cut? Haven't you ever seen the swelling? Okay, sorry. Let's not, let's not go off on any more tangents. We've already talked ad nauseum about stuff like that. At least I have in the comments. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. See, everybody thinks I'm like this calm, rational, super sweet person, but in actuality, I'm a crazy person. It's a fact. No one who has the gift of gab like me and is artistic and crazy as me, like, isn't. Don't let them fool you. Don't let my niceness on here fool you. I will fight back if I'm ticked. That is just a fact. 
And you know what? That's what makes me so beautiful. I don't take crap. And when I want something, I get it. And when I don't want something, I tell people so. It's just part of me. It's who I am. It makes me spunky. It makes me awesome. It makes me me. And I'm, I love that about me. Yes, it is also the bane of my existence and it's also the source of most of my problems. But it's also my greatest asset and blessing. And it gives me the gift of gab, which you wouldn't be here if I didn't have. So there you go. All right, so that's everything for my three week update. Things are going well. I'm trying to take it easy. No more overdoing it. I'm gonna be laying in bed most of the day. There's no reason to have anxiety. The surgery's in the past. Just deal with life one day at a time, just like it did with my weight loss. One minute at a time, one meal at a time, one decision at a time. Just make it a choice. Always have a plan. That's the way I do. And right now my plan is heal, heal, heal. And that means lay the heck down. So don't tell me to rest because I'm already doing it. I know I overdid it one time, one time, one. I'm fine. Everything's going to be fine. I will keep you guys updated as things progress. And yeah. I guess that's it. So if anybody would like to be supportive of this channel, I'm definitely in need of the support. I put this surgery on credit and I'm counting on YouTube to pay the bill. So if you guys are looking to support me in any way, I have all of the information on the many ways that I have available for supporting me and the channel and everything else. And just to say thank you. And, and even I have a wish list with gifties you can buy if you really just prefer to buy a present and have me talk about it on my channel list description. Also, Facebook group for learning how to lose weight. I'm still active over there helping people. So don't forget to check that out. And if you're not on Facebook and you want my getting started guide for free, my email is also in the about section below. All the goodies down there. All right, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Sorry about this video. It was so long. I love talking to you so much and I miss doing these sit downs with them on makeup and looking at me looking up cute. This is the first time I've done makeup in like a month. Bam. And now, you'll see in the video. Talk to you all again soon. You both got some of best life, yeah. You both got some of best life, yeah. It's something you and me, oh. You both got some of best life, yeah. Jumping, flexing, oh.